What's up guys, it's Eric from Bissan. Today we have here a 2016 Lexus CT200H and we're going to be installing our plug and play wireless CarPlay Android Auto. It's a new one that we released last year. And we also did an update on our harness. We've been getting a lot of questions about it. So we just decided to make a new video on it. And I'll also show you how to mount everything behind the radio on the bottom. Um, this is a little bit more risky in terms of your installation, just, but if you're very, very careful, it could save you about 15, 20 minutes of installation time because you don't have to drop your glove box. But if you wanna be safe um, and, and do it the old way, you can refer to our older videos on how to drop the glove box. But if you wanna save a little bit of time, you could just fit it all behind the radio. I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. And once again, just make sure you're very, very careful to make sure that you don't break any of the components and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead, not waste any time, get inside the vehicle and get started. All right guys, so we're inside the vehicle. The first thing you wanna do is make sure you disconnect the negative terminal on the car's batteries so that just in case you make a mistake on it, it's not gonna create any damage to your car's stereo system. All right, so once you disconnected the car's battery, go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and remove the shift knob, just turn it counterclockwise. All right, go ahead and place this in a safe location where it won't get scratched. And then next, we're gonna go ahead and remove this panel here. Use a larger panel removal tool like this. Make sure it's plastic so you don't damage your interior. Go ahead and just pry this out, okay, from the side. All right, we're gonna remove these, these two panels here. All you have to do is put your hand down here and just pull up on both sides. Just come right out like so. And next, we're gonna go ahead and remove this center console area. So we're gonna go ahead and raise this up and then just grab a hold of this, bring it up. Okay. It might come off as one piece or two pieces. It doesn't matter if it comes off as two pieces, no problem. Just go ahead and um, just remove it one by one. I'm gonna go ahead and just set it aside here. If you'd like, you go ahead and remove all these connectors as well. So let me go ahead and just remove these. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six. And let's see here, we got more, seven and eight. Just be careful not to forget to plug everything back in. Just some, some um, tabs and clips that's holding this in place. I'm gonna use a small clip or like a flathead screwdriver, you're gonna push the clip from the inside and just push it out. Okay, so one over here. All right, there we go. We'll go ahead and set this aside. All right, so now we have all these connectors and we have this radio exposed. We're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket. Um, we have a power tool here, but you don't necessarily need one. You could just use a wrench if you like. Uh, we also have a magnetic tool, it's not required, but it makes the installation easier if you do. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and remove four 10 millimeter bolts. One, two, and three, and four. Okay, and then once we get those out, before we remove this, let's go ahead and remove the climate control. Just place your hand behind it, and just pull it towards you. And then there's one connector that's holding it. Go ahead and disconnect that. All right, now the radio is ready to come out. Go ahead and just pull it towards you, like so. Okay, and then once this is out, let's go ahead and disconnect all the connectors behind the radio. All right, and once again, make sure not to forget to plug everything in. So we got one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, okay, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So a lot of plugs, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So every single connector needs to have something in there when we reinstall this. Okay. Okay, so once we remove the radio, you can tell there's a lot of room back here. 
as you can see so we're gonna go ahead and mount these two boxes actually down here and not behind the glove compartment um, the only challenge is just trying to maneuver through all these factory connectors making sure that when you mount it down there that it is secure and it's not gonna make any rattling noise another thing is these connection points here you want to make sure that there's no risk of it getting pushed in or, or damaged all right so next thing we're gonna do we're gonna remove these vents up here so how we're we gonna remove it we're gonna use a panel removal tool and just pry it out okay so go ahead and make it's important to use these plastic panel removal tools um, so that you don't damage the interior of your car all right so I got the right side out go for the left side now there it is all right and there's one connector for your emergency lights all right next we are going to remove the screen to do that you're going to grab a flathead screwdriver and inside here there's, a, there's like a little tab that you'll see like a little clip that's holding you're going to push it down and while you're pushing it down you're going to pull this up not sure if you can see it hopefully you can that we're going to push up and then this also needs to get pressed in pressed in while this top piece gets pushed up with the panel removal tool so i'll go ahead and do that now all right so once those two clips are released i'll go ahead and just pull it out from the top although these parts are plastic it could kind of be sharp on the edges so just be a bit careful when you're pulling this out you can use a glove if you like and i recommend you use a glove to ensure that you don't hurt your hands like how i always do okay so once we do that there's two 10 millimeter bolts there go ahead and remove those Okay, once you remove those, go ahead and just grab this and just pull it out towards you. And if you look at the back of it, I don't know if you'll notice that there's two connectors here. The blue one's for your GVIF signal and then the black one to power up your screen and also your backup camera. So go ahead and disconnect those. Just remove your radio, put it aside in a safe location. All right, so once that is out, let's go ahead and route our cables. So we're going to first route our GVIF cables. Okay, just to remind you, this install, we're going to install our boxes down here. The previous video, we did it here. Here is safer. This is a bit more risky, but you'll save some time. And as, as long as you're careful, it is okay. So if you see yourself, if you're not a careful person, then install it behind the glove box. Okay. All right. Here we go. So this GVIF in is going to connect to the car's cable. The GVIF out is going to connect. This one's going to connect to the screen. Okay. And let's go ahead and route the route this side, which is going to be the the green part so it's going to go straight down the middle <clears throat> so here it is okay, and if you want to you can wrap this with some foam tape this is not required, but this is something that you can do if you like. You can also even use uh, electric tape if you like. All right, so once this is in, let's go ahead and reconnect the top screen. All right, so let me go ahead and reconnect this. Let's go ahead and connect our main interface harness and also our auxiliary audio harness and route our antenna cable. So there's some CAN wires here. This is gonna be pre-configured already so you don't have to deal with it. Um, but if you wanna just double check our work, the red cable that's marked GS needs to be connected to the orange and the white, okay, on both sides. And then the brown cable that says RX 
will just go pass through. So these should look like this. All right. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and grab the female side of this. We're gonna connect to the factory 56 pin connector, like so. Okay. It's gonna be a lot of extra wires in, and then we're gonna go ahead and tie them later with an electric tape. Let's go ahead and route this. We're gonna route this from the driver's side here. I'm gonna go under the panel and we'll grab it with our right hand. Okay, and this is gonna be tucked in behind this panel here later. All right, see so you could either tuck it in here or you can route it to under the panel, under the steering wheel area, so it's up to you. Okay, so now let's connect the auxiliary. Should be this one. Okay, there it is. All right guys, so now that we got the audio harness and the 56 pin connector connected to the factory harness, um, go ahead and just organize the cables a little bit. Try not to cross them from each other and just keep them organized. And we're gonna go ahead and connect this one here to this box, okay, like so. All right, and you'll notice that there's a lot of additional wire, so we could go ahead and just tie them up like this because we just need to go down there, right? We don't need too much wiring, too much wires for this. So let me go ahead and organize these a little bit. And then, let me see, there's a microphone cable coming from the main harness. We're gonna connect to our MV17W, the wireless module. All right, so everything that's gonna be connected to the wireless module, I'm gonna move it to the left side here. And then what is left is our HDMI cable that we are going to connect between this box and the CarPlay module. It's a bit long, it's gonna be next to each other, so you don't really need this length, but if you do, and the mounting behind the glove box, you will need this length. USB cable. Okay, this, this is a wireless device, but if you wanna use wired, or if you wanna use this to charge your phone, it does charge much faster than your factory USB. So this is something I recommend uh, for this customer. He wants it sticking on the left side here. So I'll go ahead and route it through the little opening on the left side here. go and leave it at that go ahead and um, connect these we have the USB the RF antenna you may also refer to the written instructions on the wiring diagram so you know how everything is connected we have the audio cable here from the auxiliary harness I'm gonna connect this to line out do not connect to external speaker you'll get distorted sound because that is mono and then we also have the mic input, which is coming from the main harness, the 3.5 millimeter jack from the main harness. Oops, mic input. And we also have this cable here. This is the power cable to power up this NV17 wireless. And we also have this HDMI that connects the two boxes together. Oh yeah, so and then we got, lastly, we got the two GVIF cables for our interface here. And how we're gonna connect this is the one that's labeled GVIF out, we are going to connect to the inside. And the one that's labeled GVIF in, we're going to connect this on the outer edge, okay? And the dip switch is gonna be pre-configured for you. Um, you could also check the tag on here or you can refer to the instructions manual for the correct configuration. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and mount this back here. I'm gonna see how much room we have. And once again, while going in here, really be careful for this part right here, okay? Where the HDMI plugs into here. That's the probably the most fragile part of this kit. And if you give any pressure, it might break. Well, it will break actually. 
so got a lot of room down here uh, it's a little too much room it's gonna make some noise so what I'm gonna do with this is I will just I will add some foam tape And if you guys ever add any of these type of foam tapes, make sure you keep this area open. Also keep these vents open for ventilation and for cooling. Alright. So for this side, I actually went a little bit fatter so I could cover and give a little bit of support on this HDMI cable. Okay, so I got this. Okay, and now I could ensure that this will not rattle or make any noise when it's down here. Okay, and let me go ahead and now mount this guy. This one I will go down deeper. There's a lot of room down there. And then I'll wrap it with some foam tape. So this one I'm going to go ahead and cover as much as we can, keeping these vent holes open. When you're putting it in there, just be sure you're not forcing anything in. Don't push in too much um, and don't force anything in or else you really might end up damaging one of the connectors or one of the connection points and, and many times it's not fixable so please be very very careful when you're placing these boxes behind the radio just as you're seeing here right, let me go ahead and organize these a little bit and after that, we're going to reverse order everything we just did, which will complete the installation. All right, now let me go ahead and put the radio back. Just make sure you have occupied every single connector, okay? That you see here. Nothing is left empty. Okay, I'll start off with this. Do the easy ones. All right, everything is in. Top row, middle row, and the bottom row. All right, now that everything's in, let me go ahead and push the radio back to its original location. All right, there it is. Let me go ahead and mount the 10 millimeter bolts back on. If you wanna torque it, the correct torque spec is 10 pounds. And let me go ahead and mount the other parts back. I'm gonna go ahead and mount the center, this center area first because I do wanna test it for proper operation before we finalize and put everything else back. And this one needs to be connected back so that we could use the, the controller. Okay, just note if you turn on your car without this connected, you will get the airbag warning sign. But as soon as you connect everything back, it will disappear. Your warning lights will disappear. Everything's connected. All right, let's go ahead and do a quick test. All right, when you first turn it on, turn on your vehicle, it will, the system will load. So go ahead and give it a few minutes for that to complete. Alright, connect my phone to test operation. Okay, so we're gonna first select auxiliary under your source menu, your media. Okay, you can also press the media button here. It'll cycle through and it'll go to your auxiliary. So you'll see that new AV menu. Go ahead and um, just ignore it and press and hold the home button. Alright, and just wanna make sure I hear music. All right. Also, let's go ahead and confirm your equalizer. Make sure everything's in the center. Right. Make sure both of your side speakers are working, left and right. This customer had a little bit towards the front, so I'll leave it at that. Go ahead and confirm your next track and previous track, which is working. Volume controls, working. Okay. Let's, con let's confirm Siri. What's the weather? 
It's currently cloudy Terrific. and 56 degrees. All right. Looks like everything is functioning as it should. So I'm going to go ahead and put everything back and reinstall all the factory panels. All right. When you're putting this back in, take note of this panel. It's actually supposed to be in front of it. You can actually, here you go. So remove it. Push it back in. There it is. Right there. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and put these two panels back in. Left and right. All right, and now we're going to put the center panel piece back in. Okay, when you're pushing these panels back in, really take notice of the clip's location and make sure it's being placed right above or in front of the hole where it's supposed to go in and then you're able to push it. If that's not lined up, you force it in, you will break clips. All right, cool deal. Looks like we finished this. Let me go ahead and clean up and then we'll go ahead and do a quick demonstration. All right guys, so we finished the installation. Let me do a quick demonstration here. To get into CarPlay mode, you wanna first make sure your media is selected to auxiliary. You could either go to your menu and select it, you could press your media button and then select your auxiliary as well. And make sure your volume is you know, at a decently um, listening level. And then go ahead and long press the home button. All right, and it'll take you to this screen. This is a screen you'll see when nothing is connected. And go to your phone, we're gonna do the first initial wireless connection. Go to settings, general, CarPlay, and go ahead and select this here the MV17WBT, go ahead and pair it, and then allow it. And then we'll give it about five, 10 seconds, and you'll see it load up on the screen. All right, there it is. Once you do that, go ahead and use this mouse controller here. You'll see a little cursor here that you can move around. You also push down on the screen and drag. So this is really cool, especially when you're inside a map application, you can push down and then move it around. And then you can always push down, swipe as well. Okay. And then going back to this, um, the music controls, the up will be next track, down will be previous track. You can also use the steering wheel control, up track, and also previous track. The volume controls will also work to increase the volume, to decrease the volume. The only thing is you just don't see the change on the screen, but the change is being made. And if you want to summon Siri, you can go ahead and press menu. What is the weather, Siri? It's currently cloudy and 56 okay. degrees. And to, go, and to go back to your factory screen, you're gonna go ahead and press and hold the home button. So press and hold the home button again to go show the CarPlay screen. Um, and then let me go over some other controls or other settings that you wanna do on your phone. So once you have this set up, go back to your general, go to settings, and then go to accessibility and go to touch, all the way down, call audio routing. Make sure it's set to Bluetooth headset. And in addition to that, uh, make sure your Bluetooth setting here for your vehicle is named Lexus CT. If you see car accessory, you have to go to I and then change the name to Lexus CT to in order for the phone call to route correctly. And you also need to be connected wirelessly to the CarPlay system to route correctly as well. So I'm gonna do a really quick example here. I'm gonna go ahead and call Pete Sonic. All right, and when I make that phone call here, I could confirm it is going to Lexus CT. Here, steering wheel controls will work too to pick up the phone call to hang up like that, all right? And then this button here for the voice activation, this is locked to the Lexus system, so it won't work with Siri. Instead, you're gonna just go ahead and press the menu button to summon Siri. All right, and then there's one thing I wanna go over with you guys. So right now the phone is connected to the car's Bluetooth and the CarPlay Bluetooth. So for the car's Bluetooth side, we're gonna use it for phone calls. For the CarPlay Bluetooth, we're gonna play it, we're gonna use it for music. So you can actually confirm that um, by scrolling down and looking at this icon here, it's the CarPlay icon, and it's CarPlay selected, right? So say that you go back to your home and or you press the media button, right? Or the mode button and it'll cycle through different modes. So you gotta see, you go to your Bluetooth, you press music, okay? You hear music now, but sometimes you might not hear, depends, um, because like if you look over here, 
Okay, it did go to Lexus CT automatically. So your car is pulling music to your phone's Bluetooth. As you can see here, Lexus CT. But say that we press media button again to go to auxiliary. Um, and then we go to CarPlay sometimes. Or if you cycle through your car's Bluetooth system, it'll stay in Lexus CT, even though you're, you're in CarPlay mode. And you won't be able to hear any music, even though the counter's going. In this case, go to your phone, and then just go ahead and select the CarPlay. And then the music will resume. Uh, you won't have this issue unless you are cycling through different sources. Um, and once in a blue moon, it might happen. So if you're in the CarPlay mode, you don't hear music, go to your phone and just make sure the CarPlay selected. And how you do that, just go down and then just unlock your phone. You'll see what's playing. And you could just select here and so forth. All right. All right, guys. Well, this concludes our installation demonstration on this Lexus CT200H. It's also compatible with other Lexus CT200H from 2014 all the way to the most recent CT200H. In addition to that, it's also compatible with other 2013 all the way to 2021 Lexus models. If you have any questions, leave a comment below or you can email us at info at beatsonicusa.com. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to our page and also give us this like to help the algorithms of the YouTube. And see you on the next video.